Let's put the Pixel 6a up against the iPhone 13 Pro in the categories that matter. And those are cameras, battery life, messaging, performance, and ecosystem. Editor Pete here. Google just sent me a brand new Pixel 6a to give away to one lucky viewer of this video. So stick around to the end to find out how you can win this. So let's take these one by one. And by the end, we will hopefully come to the same conclusion that my 1200 pounds iPhone 13 Pro is better than a cheap ass Google Pixel 6a. Or is it? First up, let's talk cameras. Now the Pixel 6a has an eight megapixel camera and the iPhone 13 Pro has a 12 megapixel camera. So here are two photos using the front facing cameras. Now, which one do you like the most? Now the one on the left has done a better job at the color of my shirts. I just hate what it's done to my face. The skin looks too smooth, the color looks off. My hair is a totally different color. It makes me look like I'm going gray, thank you. And my beard even just starts disappearing. Whereas on the right, it's done a bad job at the color of my shirt, but the face is much more realistic. And yeah, perhaps it's a little over sharpened. And that's actually why I think it's pretty easy to say that the left is the iPhone and the right is the Pixel 6a. Now overall here, I just go with the Pixel 6a. Surprisingly. Now next up, here are two photos using the rear camera. Now these are both 12 megapixel cameras. And I think we've got the same thing here. The one on the left has those same skin smoothing effects. The right one has the same over sharpens. This is an easy one I say. Like again, I go with the Pixel 6a, which is on the right over the iPhone, which is on the left. I just, I wish they saw that like skin smoothing effect out. And so here are two photos on the ultra wide cameras. Again, both 12 megapixels. Now we've got the one on the left, which looks definitely brighter. Though the one on the right, I think has done a, maybe a better job with the sky. Though as they're shot, I'd pick the one on the left to post over the one on the right. It's just like a brighter overall image. Though you can, of course, you know, bump that up after if you needed to. And guess what? The Pixel 6a wins yet again. The Pixel 6a using the same camera as the Pixel 3 wins over the iPhone 13 Pro. Of course, the cameras will depend on you know, each situation. There'll be certain things that each one is better at, possibly but there is a ton of very clever processing going on by the Pixel, which the iPhone just doesn't have, or, or rather it does have some processing, but it normally comes down to personal preference over which is more pleasing to the eye. Now, generally speaking, Pixel will be more saturated and be sharper, whereas the iPhone will be less saturated and have that what's now becoming Apple's notorious skin beautification thing that I just, I keep seeing it completely ruining my iPhone photos lately. I mean, I'm embracing my 30s Apple, why can't you embrace them too? So that's photos, but what about video? Now again, let's just do a blind test here and see what you prefer. So here is the first clip. And here's the second clip. Now this one is super, super close. And as we studied this a little bit more, we decided that the first clip is better than the second clip because of the better detail. Like if you look around the beers, the, the chair in the background, even the grass, you can see the detail where if we switch back to the other video, it's just, it's way less defined, like even blurry in some cases, but there's also much less detail. So this one actually goes to the iPhone, thankfully. Now one more here, slow motion now. And here's the first clip. And here's the second clip. Now this is a clear cut winner. Like, I mean, they're both still really bad for slow motion in all honesty, but I would say the first clip is the clear winner here. Even though it like lacks detail, there's that horrible smooth skin effect, which now makes me know that it's the iPhone here. But if you compare this to what you've got on the Pixel 6a, it just looks, what is that? I mean, his face has all sorts of things going on that shouldn't be there. So the Pixel 6a wins for photos and the iPhone wins for video, at least in you know these specific tests. So how does that compare with what you think? Maybe just let me know down in the comments below. Next, let's talk battery life. Now on the iPhone 13 Pro, I get a good like one day's worth of battery out of this. And my battery health is still at like 99% on this. And I'd say it's just about a day. Like I normally have only a few percent when I go to bed, unless I like remember to charge throughout the day. Whereas on the Google Pixel, it actually does reasonably well. Like I get a solid four to five hours of screen on time, which is actually really impressive considering there is the same Google Google Tensor chip in here that's in like the Google Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro, but it's got to be because the screen only runs at 60 hertz. Now there's also no wireless charging on the Pixel 6a, which is a shame. And that also means no, of course, reverse wireless charging. But given that this is a battery life test and not an overall like power consumption thing where the iPhone does well because it has a 120 hertz display, this one does have to go to the Pixel, damn. Now both Google and Apple have their own security baked into their platforms, but regardless of which device you use, there is still a problem that that many of us face. And if you follow this channel for any length of time, you'll know that I'm a big fan of taking your online security seriously by investing in tools like password managers, antivirus, and VPNs to protect your digital self. And today's sponsor, Aura, actually combines 
all of these, a password manager, VPN, malware, and virus protection into a single service. But they go way beyond this. They also monitor the dark web, looking for your data, including emails, passwords, and social security numbers to alert you when they find anything so they can deal with it before any damage is done. Or it gives you near real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries, like if someone was opening a loan or credit card in your name. And Aura can instantly lock your Experian credit file to stop unwanted changes. They can also automatically send requests on your behalf to data brokers to remove your information, helping to reduce the amount of spam and robocalls you receive. And Aura can proactively remove suspected threats from your devices, including Android phones. Now, Aura has 24-7 US-based customer support. And get this, they give you $1 million of identity theft insurance with every plan. Identity theft is so common that there is a new victim every 14 seconds. It costs the average victim over $1,000 and it's such a big problem that since I started talking about Aura in this video, statistically speaking, five people have just had their identity stolen. So if you use my link down below in the description of this video, you'll be able to check for free to see if your data has already been passed to a data breach. And if you like their service, you can try them out for free using my link down below. So go check them out. Thank you so much to Aura for sponsoring this part of the video. Now let's get back to it. Okay, over to the messaging experience now. And for messaging, I want to incorporate the use of the assistant here too, because you know, whilst iMessage is a huge selling feature of the iPhone with all the benefits that brings, particularly with iOS 16, where you can unsend messages, you can drag and drop images, which will you know, automatically remove the backgrounds, send fireworks, and just, just a ton of stuff. The Pixel also has a trick up its sleeve, and that is an actual, like, useful voice assistant that works. I've kind of given up asking Siri for anything more than what's, like, the time or, or what's the weather like today. Sure, Short sentences like that, it can handle just fine. Just don't ask it any existential questions. But try to dictate a message to a friend, and it's frustrating, like both because you can never make it through a whole message without it making like a mistake, and because for you to send it, you have to wait for the, would you like to send it? Now this is where the Pixel has it right, but with a caveat. I love the Pixel voice assistant. You can use it to send full text messages, add emojis, even send the message without having to wait a decade for it to like repeat the whole message to you. It just works really, really well. There's also the call screen feature, where the Google Assistant will answer phone calls for you and like screen them for you using voice recognition to show you on your screen what the caller is saying so you can then decide whether to pick the call up or not. Those features are awesome, but, and at least for me, I use Google Workspace as my like main account and this seems to cause me a whole ton of problems with getting the Assistant to work properly on my Pixel devices. Now I know it won't affect most people who use the Pixel though, so it's not fair to like dock points to that. More just something I wish Google would fix. So, hey, if you're listening, Google, Google aren't listening. So what does that mean overall? Well, actually I find myself using iMessages less and less. And instead I'm finding more conversations and moving to like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or, or just anything but iMessage. And so whilst iMessage does work incredibly well, like considering most of my messages aren't sent on iMessage anymore, actually the Google Pixel provides a better experience for writing out messages with their voice features and that tensor chip. This is not going the way that I thought it would go. Okay, so let, let, let's just move on. Performance now, surely this is gonna be a clear win and actually, with the Pixel 6a, I do find it's a slower experience than the iPhone 13 Pro, which is a little unfair. £1,200 versus, you know, 400 And whilst there are ways you can speed things up, like the animation speed by going to the developer settings, you are still restricted to that 60 hertz display. And something else that I should have probably have mentioned in the camera comparison, but there's something I have experienced on pretty much every Android phone that I ever use, and that's shutter lag. So shutter lag is the time that it takes from the moment you press the button to the moment it actually takes the photo. And on the Pixel 6a, there is a definite shutter lag thing. When you directly compare this to the iPhone 13 Pro. Now there's also one elephant in the room, which unfortunately is still there. And that is the underscreen fingerprint sensor. Still the same they had in the Pixel 6, Pixel 6 Pro, which can feel quite slow at times. And it is nothing quite like using Face ID on the iPhone. Now I guess Apple's just painted that to stop anyone else from copying them, which does suck as I find Face ID is very, very convenient on the iPhone. And yes, I know that Android phones do have face unlock, technically speaking, but this is actually a far less secure feature than Apple's proprietary Face ID system, which won't allow someone to unlock unlock it by using a photo of you, which is technically possible. Even opening apps on the iPhone is a night and day difference with the Pixel 6a. It's not even a fair comparison here, but, and they're always seem to be bust in each of my videos. This is a £399 phone, or rather a £320 phone, when you factor in the Pixel Buds that come with this sort of phone, are worth about £80 or so on eBay. So this is a £320 phone compared to a £949 iPhone. You could buy three of these Pixel 6a's for just one of these iPhones. So just put that into consideration here. So as far as pure performance goes, 
The iPhone 13 Pro does win hands down here, but you could buy one of every color, have three times the battery life, or have two spares, three times the storage capacity. The Pixel isn't a bad option. I'm just saying that boiling it down to performance, the iPhone here does win. Which brings us to the ecosystem. That word, that one word that defines all iPhone users. That thing that locks us in and prevents us from going elsewhere. And one of the reasons, honestly, it's a big struggle for me to move away from an iPhone. When you mix an iPhone with an Apple Watch, with an iPad, with a Mac computer, with AirPods, as long as you stay in the Apple ecosystem, everything does work beautifully. Audio will move between headphones like seamlessly as you move between devices and the fact I can sit here and move my mouse to suddenly be able to control like my iPad using my laptops, keyboard and mouse is just nuts. And things like AirDrop do make things like dropping files a hugely convenient and easy task to do over on an iPhone. And this is an area where Apple are definitely leading the way right now. But I do get the impression that Google aren't too far behind. We've got Google with their Pixel devices now. You can still do a ton of those things. You can still copy and paste between Chrome. You can even AirDrop from Android devices using other like copycat services, which will work cross platforms to go from you know, Windows to Android or Windows to Mac, or Mac to Android, Android to Mac, Android to Android, like the sky is the limit. And with the Pixel Watch, hopefully coming soon, I am really hoping to see something special from Google with that. But for me, the ecosystem, whilst it's a significantly expensive ecosystem to be a part of, it does work really, really well. Like particularly with Apple's M1 and like M2 chips, they've got AMD and Intel scrambling to find anything that can beat them when it comes to kind of performance versus power consumption. It's just, it's just absolutely nuts. So that brings Apple in as the winner for the ecosystem. And all in all, that means that our winner is actually the Google Pixel 6a, a £399 or £320 phone, depending on how you look at it. It's got a great camera, great for messaging, great battery life. It's just a shame it falls over in the video, a few missing features like wireless charging and you know, 120 hertz or even 90 hertz. And of course, that best in class Apple ecosystem. So is the Pixel 6a better than an iPhone. Each and every month, I'm giving away a piece of tech. And this month, I'm giving away a whole flipping phone, a Google Pixel 6a in charcoal to one lucky person. And all you have to do to win this is be on my newsletter. So just follow the link down below and sign up for my newsletter to be in it to win it. And maybe whilst you're down there, also grab a free trial of Aura to check that your data is secure. Now the winner for the Pixel 6a will be announced via my newsletter at the end of August. So best of luck. And now let's get back to answering the question of all questions. Well, over the last 18 months of testing out tons of different Android phones, I come to just one conclusion, and that is that there is never going to be a clear winner. Like no matter how many people flame each other in the comments, there are some things that Android does very, very well. And there are some things the iPhone does just as well, if not better. But apparently in this specific comparison of these specific phones, the Pixel 6a is the official champion. Now, if you're watching this and still think Apple is just a load of expensive tosh, then I'd suggest you check out this video where they are literally creating a whole new game for themselves. Or watch this video where the Pixel 6a is a very, very close contender against the Nothing Phone 1. And I'll see you there. Cheers.